CEO of Pandora says the jewelry market remains stagnant, stagnant, but that didn't stop his company from reporting strong quarterly results. So you see the stock up there, almost 3%, after the jeweler raised its outlook for the second time this year. It's expecting to grow between 9 and 12% in 2024. CEO Alexander Lasik says Pandora is successfully becoming a full jewelry brand. The company's broader range of products appear to have helped the bottom line. I'll say Pandora CEO Alexander Lesik is with us now from London. Thanks so much for being with us. You know, many want to know your secret here, right, in terms of the strategy, because it clearly tends to be working from what we can see from your results. And I want to point out this is purely a discretionary spend. Perhaps you would argue differently, but no one needs the charm or the bracelet or the necklace. No, I mean, that is true. Uh, as much as I would love people to need to uh, wear jewelry, that's probably not the case. So it is a discretionary category. There is maybe one side to it where uh, the jewelry category at large, not just Pandora, uh, is also used for gifting. Um, and people kind of keep gifting on birthdays and other um, occasions. So that's probably the need aspect of it. But fundamentally, it is a discretionary category. And uh, I think one of the reasons Pandora has been doing well in the recent years is, is not just the last quarter, is that we keep investing in, in a great experience with the brand. Uh, we have a clear positioning. We stand for something uh, uh, quite unique, I think, in the, in the jewelry space. And more and more consumers are, are realizing this and, and uh, coming forth and, and uh, interacting with us. And, and so the fundamental driver of, of our success so far is, is essentially built on getting more people engaged in the brand. So it, this is a traffic game for us. It was quite a risk, though, when you think about expanding, especially that, that jewelry brand and, and getting into more uh, and more types of jewelry. You know, the other thing I found interesting here is that most of the sales happen in person. That can also be a tough sell. What is that experience like or what are you trying to make that experience like for consumers? So, so <clears throat> if, you, if you take a step back and think about what the category does for consumers or the reasons why people buy or consume jewelry, as it were, uh, the, it, you can simplify this by saying there are two main drivers of, of why you would entertain this uh, category. One would be to use jewelry as, as a part of your styling. So let's assume that you buy a new piece of clothing, a, a bag and shoes and whatnot, and then you want to kind of add a, a little spark to that with, with um, a styling accessory, which would be jewelry in this case. So that's one of the kind of reasons why you enter the category. The other reason would be uh, when you're looking to um, commemorate something that's really important for you. And we call that jewelry that has a particular meaning to you. Normally, I, I use my wedding ring as a, as a great example. Of course, not a particularly fanciful piece of jewelry, but the, the affection I have to this is very high. So the emotional kind of connection I have with this piece of jewelry is important to me. Most brands are kind of positioned on the styling side of things, whereas Pandora has chosen to play on jewelry with the meaning. So we're a little bit on our own in, 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 in that space. And this is incredibly important that you kind of try to own something that's unique uh, about a brand because it is a very, very fragmented market with lots of choice for consumers. To, so to stand out and do something that's important for consumers is, is an important thing um, for, for, for any brand, really. And I think Pandora has managed to carve out a very nice uh, position, which seems to resonate with many, many people across the globe. Yeah, you're really, uh, and when, especially when you point out things like a wedding ring, and engagement ring, you're, you're really pointing to the sentimentality of it. And as you said, that lends to the experience. At least your results prove that they do. Can I talk to you more broadly about consumers, uh, consumers that may be looking for lower price points, more value? I mean, what, have you, what has your company been seeing? Um, so... Um Let's say, it. So, so first of all, we, the last few years um, has, has really put all consumers to the test. And I'm now not talking about the ultra rich people, but you know, the, the middle of the market, which is the segment that we are focusing on. That's also where the largest volumes in the jewelry space are, are being uh, sold. Um, so, you know, we've gone through the pandemic, then, then we have, you know, interest rates and recession and inflation and all of those good things. All of that has essentially uh, put a pressure on the discretionary spend. And as we just uh, said a minute ago, it is a discretionary category. So the, so the pie has somehow not been growing as it used to do. Pre-pandemic, the jewelry category globally was kind of growing at 
three to four percent. So essentially two times GDP as a CAGR for the last 10 years or so. Post the pandemic, what we see globally is essentially that on a good day, I would say that the jewelry category is flat. I think more, more maybe it's you know, trading a couple of uh, points negative in the in the last two years, which which I think is a sign that the discretionary spend in that cohort is is under pressure. So you have to work harder to uh, essentially uh, pull people into to brands and in these type of uh, categories. People simply have a little bit less money to spend. So, mm -hmm. so I do think that you know, having a clear brand idea, offering great value when people are a little bit um, under, under pressure, those are important aspects of, of any brand that is trying to succeed in this uh, type of environment. Well, they certainly are impressive results, and we will continue to follow their progress. Uh, Alexander Lasik, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. And I do want to clarify that the share price that we put up earlier is the American depository receipt and not the European share price.